Thanks, uh, thanks very much for that speech. A lot of good information in there. I wrote down a, a little bit of it. Small is beautiful. I'm not offended. <laughs> okay, so uh, when, I, when I considered the title of this panel and what I could speak about from a fintech perspective, I did think about, the, about what innovative investment meant. It probably meant risky or unproven investments like the electric vehicle sector. Who invests in the EV sector or these type of innovative investments? Well, different types of people do. One type is buying into the sector because they're willing to make risky investments in search of high returns. So it's all about profits. Others are making these investments because they are making an ethical decision and believe in supporting these businesses that are bringing a worthwhile product to the market. Here I'm, of course, talking about big business listed stocks. As a fintech business, we can, we can, we can of course provide access to financial markets to retail clients across the world. We can provide education, research, and access for people to make decisions to invest in these things or not for the purpose of profit or for ethical purposes. Here I say one or the other because I think it's difficult to do both. And that building sustainability, sustainable businesses can be more costly. I then wondered if by innovative we meant new. I grew up in the UK, where in the 80s we had local products, milk, orange juice, eggs, delivered to our house by electric vehicle, in sustainable packaging that could be washed and reused. So I figured that perhaps these things weren't that new. Then I wondered why the model wasn't very popular and concluded because it was more costly than wrapping everything in plastic and it was probably less convenient to wait for the milkman than to drive down to a big supermarket where you could buy it slightly cheaper. Of course, that was the UK, not like here in Cyprus. I'm a Greek Cypriot and spent a good amount of time here up in the mountains where, of course, there was no electric milk float. But what there was was a community of people living sustainably, sharing resources, working the land, making use of what technology was available and affordable, like solar panels heating water in a country that has plenty of sun. These things sound very sustainable, but pretty time-consuming, hard work, not as efficient as mass production. And there must have been a more convenient, more profitable way to do things. So at that point, I concluded that we focused on convenience and consumerism, and companies focused on profits serving the consumers. Hmm. So I now find myself as a CEO of a fintech, and I think about what I should be focused on and what I can do with the resources that I have available to me and what resources are around us. I ended up with four parts. The first two are about innovative investments we make ourselves as a business. And the second two are about the innovative investments that we can provide the outside world. So the first one is looking within the business at what we're actually doing. Second, looking around our local neighborhood. Third, what value tech can add to the world from a sustainability perspective. And lastly, the products we're, service, we're serving to our clients. So the inward looking part looks at culture setting. How do we include sustainability within our mission? How do we communicate and agree with our stakeholders the importance of sustainable practice and what our ESG stance is? Have we done as much as we can considering sustainability in our policies of how much time staff should dedicate outside of the business working on positive for the local community? How do we encourage it? Are we doing our best to give staff the opportunity to work sustainably at home or in the office? Have we set our offices up to maximize sustainability? Do we audit ourselves for best practice in this area? Do we demand it of our suppliers? After we look at ourselves, we look over the fence at people in our sector here and abroad and see what they're doing. What best practices can we learn and improve? How are other CEOs thinking about this and how can we compare notes? Are we all solving for sustainability and not maximum profits? What else in the neighborhood that we can work with to move things forward? We, we've heard about the networks of excellence on previous panels. Then on to the outside world parts. At high level, what can tech companies do? Provide digitalization and paperless transactions to other businesses. Provide data analytics and machine learning opportunities. Give greater financial inclusion to the world so, so that people can have the opportunity to invest their money in what they want. 
We could work in partnerships with networks of excellence, providing infrastructure, usable technology, even provide these services to government, civil service, utility companies, and help with efficiency. Then last but not least, what products are we, as a fintech community, offering to clients on investment platforms? How much information and education is out there today on sustainable products? Are investment opportunities actually accessible outside of listed businesses to people? Can small and medium businesses be supported by investors? Who is assessing the quality and credentials of innovative investments? How many green funds are available? How many green products are available? What I mean by that is where people are doing sustainable work, getting better rates for, from borrowing, etc. Where I land on in my conclusions is that I've asked many questions, and clearly we're at a very early stage on this pathway to providing innovative investments. But importantly, those investments depend on the willingness of entrepreneurs to start the projects and investors to support them with funding, both knowing that there is a profitability cost to doing so. I think to do that, we need to have a supportive ecosystem locally. Regulation, tax, legal accounting, banking, payments, R&D, that takes into consideration the aims of businesses and perhaps to provide that little extra incentive, grant, support to both businesses and investors that are trailblazing their path. Why do they need that? Because when times are hard and people need to survive, profits will be maximized. And if we're serious about supporting innovation and sustainability, then we need to make the numbers work over the long term to keep these projects moving forward and don't end up back at the same conclusion as the milk floats of the 1980s. Thank you. Thank you.